guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. She was missing the last couple videos. I am. I'm back now. She I, is back now. Oh, yeah, I am here now. And she brought me alcohol. I did. I thought we might need it. Yeah, we might need it for this one. So we'll just wish all of you in America in, uh, a happy early Thanksgiving. And we'll just send good wishes to everybody else. And we'll send good wishes to everybody else. Uh, tomorrow we do have a couple of videos lined up that are being pre recorded. Um, yeah, because so, we're busy. Because <laughs> so, we're busy doing the Thanksgiving we thing. We are very thankful. We are. For hitting 77, almost 78,000 subs. And we want to get to 100,000. So please subscribe if you have... Please subscribe. I see the alcohol's kicking in. Please subscribe <laughs> if you haven't done so already. And make sure you're still subscribed because people keep getting unsubscribed. And tell your friends, tell your family, tell their dogs, tell their friends, their dog's friends. Just tell them to subscribe. We don't have enough dogs watching this channel. No, we need more dogs watching uh, this channel. PETA will get involved. They'll have the PETA laws. If dogs are watching your channel, even though it's not intended for dogs, yeah, that's right. they're they're gonna fine us uh, for right. that. That's right. Anyway, so we're damaging these these poor young dogs. Uh, <laughs> so we're gonna talk about speaking of damage, we're gonna talk about the damage to the Star oh, Wars. My franchise uh there has been damage to the star wars franchise and i'm sorry uh we get these random disney apologists uh in the comments section they show up on twitter and they're all like uh-uh i'm like no look dude uh or dude that the the damage is done star wars is damaged well i think it's funny even when we back disney they still complain they still complain they <laughs> find something to complain win. about it's the same people you can't anyway. win with these people they always try to do mental gymnastics but whatever star wars is in trouble it's been in trouble for a while, ever yes. since The Last Jedi. And, uh, you know, Galaxy's Edge did not do as well as Disney had hoped for. Well, Solo bombed. Speaking of Galaxy's Edge, um, they are not allowing uh, the new Rise of the Resistance attraction to be part of Extra Magic Hours. Uh-oh. So Extra Magic Hours, if you don't know about it, it's when you stay at a resort hotel on property at Walt Disney World. Um, you're allowed to go in an hour early or stay an hour late or a couple hours, however they have it set up. And those are the Extra Magic Hours. Well, um, they're going to allow you to come in and ride uh, Smuggler's Run, and you're allowed to go shopping and spend money at the restaurants and buy buy stuff. But you cannot ride Rise of the Resistance in extra, with that, in extra magic hours. Okay, that's going to piss off a lot of people. It is. And the reason that they do this is because it offsets the crowds, and it's kind yeah. of a reward for paying all that shit ton of money to stay on property. And I, I personally, I'm wondering, I have to wonder, is it because the crowds look a lot worse if they don't have extra magic hours? Uh, it could be that or, you know, two, as my as I understand with Rise of the Resistance, they actually have uh, cast members that are actors mm -hmm. within the attraction itself. And it might be that as simple as they don't want to pay people. Well, either way, a cast member will probably write us and tell us. So if I'm cast sure they will. Well, let us know why that is. Please do so. Would love to know. Okay, continue. So we're going to talk about this article. A lot of people have been talking about J.J. Abrams. And, and I'm going to go back to this first. But J.J. Abrams uh, is acknowledging the fandom menace yeah the fan I think that's funny the fandom menace of course uh are a i mean the vocal minority the vocal minority <laughs> that seem to make up the majority of uh star wars youtubers these days yes uh he 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 uh acknowledges those uh rascally kids yeah um if it wasn't for the fandom menace and their stupid dog uh lucasfilm so, would have gotten away with it all he did was just give them a shout out and you know uh, yeah, right. cemented what? their existence. So way to go, dude. That kind of, you know, goes against what you think you'd want. Alexa, what's the fandom menace? Yeah. <laughs> Siri, what's the fandom menace? Yeah. So he just, he just cemented their uh, infamy. But uh, before we get into that, we're going to, I'm going to, speaking of fandom menace, this is coming from Ichibaka. Uh, Disney Star Wars is dumb. That's his blog. Disney Star Wars mm -hmm. is dumb. And uh, the box office prediction for Rise of Skywalker keeps dropping. This is like what happened with Solo. I this remember this. is exactly like what happened with Solo. I don't think it's going to be as severe as Solo. Oh, no, I don't think so either. For no other reason than they're going to make sure they it damn well does better. Either they have to buy tickets to give them up for free or whatever. <laughs> That's well, what they're going to probably Disney do. Disney would never do that. They would never do that. Uh, so yeah, Solo, the same thing happened where, you know, they were talking about this gangbusters opening weekend they were going to have. And within the course of six weeks, uh, it wound up, it wound up being a dud. And mm. we saw a lot of the same things where they crowed about, uh, pre-sales for the tickets. It was, it was going to be fantastic. So the end of last month, box office pro said they were estimating 185 to 255 million opening weekend and down, 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 down we go to, uh, today where we're down to 175 to 200 million 
opening weekend and we still have you know almost a month to go yeah uh and now i i know that there's some freaking out because we've had people write us and say that disney is doing some things they've never done before to market this movie uh disney world annual pass holders are getting emails like hurry 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 get your tickets to the rise of skywalker you gotta come see this thing yeah. it's the epic finale again Again. <laughs> Again. It's the second finale. It's the, the second, second coming. Ending. It's like a Final of Fantasy boss. <laughs> oh, Palpatine is a Final Fantasy boss. You kill him and then he comes back. Mm -hmm. uh, he always comes back. All right. So let's let's talk about J.J. Abrams and how he acknowledges the Phantom Menace. Those meddling kids. Those meddling kids. Uh, so Esquire did an article and I'll put a link to the original Esquire article. Yeah. Uh, to, somehow managed some of these blogs, man, not this one, but other blogs that it was managed to get like 10 stories out of one. <laughs> right. This is coming from uh, our friends over at bounding into comics. Uh, speaking with Esquire, Abrams recognized the fandom menace while touching on a variety of topics concerning the upcoming star Wars films. You still uh, legitimized it, which I think is hilarious. I know, right? Uh, th I thought these people didn't exist. I thought yeah. it was all a very small number of, of just disgruntled uh, fanboys who don't matter. Uh, so Esquire asked him, over the last couple of years since The Last Jedi came out, I've been writing a lot about the response to the movie and some of the toxic fandom around Star Wars in this new era. Yeah, it was clearly a loaded question. It really was. Yeah. There are some fans who take issue with the filmmaking, other fans who take issue with some of the more progressive themes. I'm curious, how do you... Watch the response to Star Wars movies change in this modern era compared to maybe the prequel, uh, the prequel ser series, or how fans originally responded to them. Abrams said, I think the bigger question is, how has everything changed? The reaction to Star Wars, the increased attacks, the increased, attacks. The increased negativity, oh the fandom menace, as they call it, you know, that is not unique to Star Wars, obviously. But wait, 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 wait. There's more to it if you go to the Esquire article, but um, what else? Oh, they have more here. Yeah, I think we live in a time when. If you're not being divisive, if you're not creating something that's aversive, quick bait, sometimes you don't feel quite like you're playing the game. Okay, well, here's the thing. Not everybody who didn't like aspects of the movie is fandom menace. Uh, yeah, they're, look. It's like you either like it or you're a troll. It's basically how it keeps being put out there. Look, I don't think the fandom menace is small in number. No, but, it's not. But the fandom menace specifically did not create the apathy that mm -hmm. the general public has for Star Wars. The toys are not selling. Mm -hmm. That's not the Phantom Menace's fault. Okay. Uh, people did not turn out for Galaxy's Edge like Disney had hoped. That's not the Phantom right. Menace's fault. Solo bombed. It would take a lot more people to not go see Star Wars than the Phantom Menace. Well, it has to be the general don't public. Don't you know, they keep saying it's just a vocal minority. Yeah. So the general public has basically run out of give a shit. Actually, now, the Phantom Menace cares more than anybody about well, Star Wars it. at this they, point. That's what, that's what gets me. The people that care the most are the ones that are most upset, and they're the ones they keep making you know comments about. Now, we are not Phantom Menace. Um, we, we actually haven't thrown ourselves in with any group, whether it be Comic Escape, Phantom Menace, or whatever. <laughs> we're our own thing. Well, no, we're just too busy doing things that you ever, like, you know, really throw in with anything. Um, but uh, I know a lot of listeners who are, and we know people who are, and a lot of listeners who aren't, we know people who aren't. And, um... Here's the thing. It's like, you know, people are allowed to not like it. And I'm sorry if that makes you mad. Geeky had to pop my top here. Couldn't um, get the dang bottle open. I had to, so I had I had to, to get open the, the bottle for I had to him. get the top off the beer. Um, the flavored beer. But, you know, in among any group, there are some people who, who will attack. But I think that's a very small percentage of people who don't like this movie that caused any trouble whatsoever. Most people were just like, it sucks. Here's why. Yeah, and actually, I'm seeing I'm seeing a lot of uh, attacks from people blindly defending Disney uh, yes. that are very suspicious. Uh, they all come in waves. Mm -hmm. A lot of them t tend to be uh, uh, people that don't have a lot of history on YouTube or have very few subs. Uh, there's just a lot of weirdness going on, and I think I think Disney and Lucasfilm in particular are freaking out a hell of a lot more about this uh, online situation than they're letting on. They're trying to play right. it cool. They're trying to play it cool, but they are clearly freaking out yeah and they're just like oh you know it's just like this hit, this is hate group a fandom menace and this hate like, group you know <sighs> all right yahtzees <laughs> right it's because you don't like the movie i mean i can't tell you my names i've been called because i've just i don't like it so you know yeah so i mean this is the thing too that like we see this we're seeing this more and more in entertainment though where the fans are basically told to just shut up and take it. You know yeah. what? I mean, and that's, that's what the Phantom Menace is standing up against is the whole shut up and take it, you know, mentality. So go them. Um, yeah. They just got legitimized by JJ um, Abrams. So, you know, that's going to backfire. 
Uh, yeah, I think it is because now they've just called attention uh, to it. But they're setting up to blame them. Like if it doesn't, if it, if it fails, it's because the fandom menace. Which one? The fandom menace will gladly take credit for that. And two, <laughs> it's not. You know, it's it, it's it's a it's a general public problem. Is what yeah, they it have is. Too. It is. It's uh, they don't understand. Like Lucasfilm and Disney. I mean, current year Disney especially is so completely tone deaf about a great many things. Uh, not just Star Wars, but just in general, they just seem like they're completely detached from their fan base from their audience uh they keep wanting to create we saw this with marvel comics and we see it with parks they want to make the audience in their own image they don't mm. want to just serve the audience they have right and uh it's gonna bite them in the ass it already is their it, ass yeah, has totally been bitten. It is. <laughs> their ass has bitten their ass has been bitten and now it's chapped their asses are chapped. It's irritated from the it is. bitten. It is irritated. Uh, Abrams acknowledges he hasn't liked everything that has happened in Star Wars, but does not preclude him from being a fan. Uh, th 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 I love this. I love this. Read this, though, because I love this. I always love Star Wars because it's got a huge heart. Did I always believe and agree with every single thing that happened in every movie, whether it was the prequels or the original trilogy? No, but I, I do love Star Wars, yes. Yeah, like, this is what most people say. Am I wrong? Most no. people were like, I don't like the new movies, but I like the classic movies, or I don't like this one, but I like the the, the prequel trilogy, or I like these ones, but I don't like the classic. And that's okay. And I don't know why, and you know, for all his comments making this, well, you guys are all just complainers. How about the people that are basically out there saying, if you don't love it, you're not a fan. What about those people? Why isn't he addressing that? Because, you know, that's where the problem is too. And maybe if you didn't have directors going out and attacking the fandoms, because they're like, but wait, they have some questions. And they went out and attacked the fandoms. You might not have the, you know, these groups coming out against you now. Yeah. Yeah. So it says, um, for me, I hope, and I'm sure a naive that we can return to a time where we give things a little more latitude. Well, maybe, yeah, that's easy for you to say when you were, you're part of the team that effed it up. Yep. Yeah. You know, when you're, when you're the one making the mistakes, of course, you're going to be like, well, I hope someday that everybody likes me again. You know what I mean? We all have to agree with every single thing to love something. Yeah, we've said that how many times? I know. I, I don't know anyone. This who, is what most everybody's been saying. God, I don't know anyone who has a spouse or partner or any family member or any friend who loves and agrees with every single thing that person is and does. We have to return, I think, to nuance and acceptance. Here's the thing is, most people are, most, okay, this is what pisses me off. I'm going to rant. I'm sorry. I'm pissed. Sorry, mom, for language. Um, here's what makes me mad. We have been saying that. People like us have been saying that. You know what? I don't like the new movies. Um, you're allowed to like things. You're allowed not to like things. But you weren't allowed to not like these movies. You were told if you did not like them, you were some kind of uh, is, foe, whatever. Insert insult here. Alt right, whatever. Because you didn't like these movies. And you might have said, well, I like other movies i just don't like these ones but doesn't matter you're still a terrible person but then he goes on about nuancing and acceptance basically what it means is we have to nuance and accept these movies yeah it's like but you know f you and everything else and that's what i'm mad about i'm so tired of being told i have to love something or there's something wrong with me and then they go on to say well we need acceptance well you guys are the ones out there bad mouth in the fandom what the hell yeah that's what they're they're not addressing like i mean jj abrams for all i love this people who start the war then want to call for peace and look like the heroes mm -hmm. but the reality is uh i mean look people didn't didn't really care for you know some of the aspects of the movie especially last jedi but instead of diffusing the situation then because even like with us it was like oh that movie was ass but you know we'll still go see solo but then we started to see you know ryan johnson other people from lucasfilm other people from disney constantly attacking and actually these bloggers constantly attacking constantly running down the fans really what about acceptance and nuances what happened to acceptance and nuance yeah we're all a bunch of russian bots we're all uh alt-right yahtzees right because um, we didn't like the new movies but basically you know the lesson here is we all should be accepting we all should just you know understand that everybody likes what we like which is what we have been saying the entire time yeah yeah uh, but they talk about how the fandom mass is growing, uh, part of uh, movies, television, gaming, uh, comic book fandom, who seek a return of escapist entertainment without agenda. That, well, yeah, uh, fan mass I thought was more specifically Star it Wars. Is, but they, yeah, they're combining things, but yeah. But they talk about some of the, the YouTubers, uh, you know, um, Geeks and Gamers. Jeremy, I met him. Actually, I met him at uh, Celebration. But yeah, it's just, they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. And, you know, speaking of throwing kerosene on the fire, um, Ryan John's right. Ryan Johnsville. Yeah, he's Johnsville. Right? Ryan Johnsville. It's the beer talking. Uh, Ryan Johnson is thankful on Thanksgiving Eve. He's thankful for negative comments. I'm rubber and you're glue. Whatever you say bounces off of me and sticks to you. 
And if you don't like it, you can huff it. I'm just saying. I mean, that's what this reminds yeah, me of. Yeah, and they always, now they want to take the high road. This is what blows my mind. Like, this is the same with the comic book people, too. They're the ones throwing the shit. Well, his movie comes out. Yeah, his movie's coming out. Please, you don't know. Don't forget about me. Here don't I forget am. about me. I've got a movie coming out. Don't go see Frozen. Uh, come see my my Clue movie. Um, that's what I thought it was. I thought it was remake of Clue. But it does have a really good cast. But I, yeah, whatever. Um, so this is what Ryan Johnson said. Before I made The Last Jedi, I have never had anyone hate me on the internet before. If, well, what rock have you been living under? Welcome to our world, Ryan, every day of our lives. If during the course of a year I got one negative tweet, I would go into a panic because oh nobody knew who you were. And then you go from literally nobody knew who you well, were. I think that plays into it. And you went from that to Star Wars. Well, no, I think it plays into it because then it's like, I can do whatever and say whatever because I am Ryan Johnson. And I don't think he realized that people are like, oh, hell, no, you can't. Yeah. And uh, so he got one negative comment. He'd go into a panic and be like, oh my God, someone out there doesn't like me. I need to fix this. The thing well, is though- Why the hell would you take on Star Wars fandom? The thing, <laughs> Yeah, right? The thing is though, I'm really thankful because what that meant is that my sense of self-worth was attached to the notion of everybody liking me online. And the fact that this process has made me out of survival disconnect from that. So Ryan Johnson survival. is uh, oh. calling you a man baby whoa, because whoa. he wants to survive. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. He doesn't, he, his self-worth was attached to the notion and he, he, he's trying to disconnect. But yet he comes back every other day to, to bring Star Wars into it and put his name on it to try to promote his own stuff. Yep. I'm detaching from it, but here I come again. I can't. I'm detaching. Uh, here I am. It's like a flipping yo-yo. You think you got him back? Here he comes. Oh, there he's gone. Oh, there he, he is. He won't let people forget him. I think he's, I, I honestly think he's addicted to himself. the attention. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> He can't quit himself. Uh, no, I think he's addicted to the attention because nobody knew who Ryan Johnson was before Star Wars and people were kind of getting over him and, and looking forward to episode nine. And now Knives Out is coming out and nobody really gives a shit because it is like an indie movie, right? So now he's got to keep bringing up Star Wars just to get that, like, I need people to talk about me again because, right. gosh, wasn't that like, great when I, I was the center I'm of attention? Away. I'm disconnecting from that until I need you again tomorrow. Yeah, until I'm I disconnecting from that next week. Is Ryan Johnson getting another Star Wars film? He says yes. Yeah, is Ryan, yeah, and you know, Disney has to love this. Disney would love for fans to forget about The Last Jedi, I think. But, uh, you know, every opportunity he's given every time he talks to the media, Ryan Johnson is re reminding people that he worked on The Last Jedi. Well, there was something funny on here when they talked to J.J. Abrams. Let me go down here and find it. Um, he's talking about uh, Ryan Johnson. And then you talked about how you were surprised by Ryan Johnson's constant subversion of expectation in The Last Jedi. From your perspective, what was it like following that movie and what he changed the narrative and how did that change your approach to making The Rise of Skywalker? <laughs> well, there were some choices that made things a bit more fun for us <laughs> because, for example, Ryan didn't have the whole group collaborative adventure of it together. And that was really fun to get to tell a story of the group. The droids out on one breakneck, crazy, desperate adventure, you know? The choices that he made for me were as a fan, as a reader of the script, a fan of his, a fan of Star Wars, you know, because you have to like it all, because it's all nuanced, and if you're a real fan, you like it. It uh, was just fun to read someone else's take that was so about surprising the viewer. That See, here's the thing, he went so hard trying to surprise the viewer that he effed over the whole movie. Yeah. And the surprise got me nearly every time. So I'm, <laughs> I'm sure like, he did, he, he, he's probably reading the script. He's probably watching the movie like, ah, oh, shit. Oh, they snow. Oh, shit. No, no, he says, nah. He says, nothing that he did in The Last Jedi got in the way of things we had talked about wanting to down the line. That nothing, nothing messed up anything there. I call shenanigans. I, I call shenanigans on everything this person does. This but, you is, know. this is, this is, uh, they are presenting a, this is a marketing thing. I think there's some behind the scenes drama. I think they're presenting a unified front. Uh, so the fandom menace doesn't find weakness to be like, oh, J.J. Abrams is throwing shade at Ryan Johnson. Well, I'm just trying to understand if J.J. is dressing up as a farmer or he's trying to be, you know. George uh, Lucas uh, light. He's trying. Yeah, George Lucas light. I was going <laughs> to say is. a hipster, but you know. No, that's his George Lucas flannel. He's trying to channel George Lucas. He's look, got I'm the beard. He's look, got the flannel. I'm as reliable as Lucas. I'm almost George Lucas. Uh, he's dollar store George Lucas. No, he was. That's a lot of dollars. That's a lot. <laughs> that's an expensive dollar store. That is one expensive. That is a four billion dollar. So yeah, Ryan Johnson's thankful. Well, I got. I got to show you these comments oh, though. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh yeah. Okay, go ahead. These comments are crazy. Um, you do that. I'll drink. 
Okay, you're gonna drink after this. I love this comment. This is coming from a guy named uh, Chatty Corpse. <laughs> Chatty Corpse. Here, hey Frito Munchers. This I I I swear Frito to, Munchers. I swear to okay, God, Fritos. this is probably a journalist because this sounds like one of these comicbook.com or, or comic book resources journalists. Take your shots at the guy you've abused for the past two years for making a movie that did not line up with your sad fan wait, fiction. Wait, 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 wait. But he abused the fandom and his movie was the fan I fiction. Know. I know most of you think of MCU movies with their gen genius quips. I, I love you 3000, America's ass, etc. cetera, highbrow cinema. But Ryan Johnson is a true filmmaker, brilliant and gifted enough this to- This is his cousin or something. I know, it's Ryan It's Johnson. Ryan Johnson. <laughs> Ryan Johnson's a true filmmaker. Thanks, mom. Uh, brilliant and gifted enough to realize Star Wars has been mired in nostalgia for decades. So he shook things up with a bold left turn that true fans have admired and embraced. Oh, well, if you don't like it, you're not a true fan. True fan. Uh, no, I don't think so, Chatty Corpse. Also, I think it's funny that, you know, basically he subverted expectation, which says to me he did a movie that was so far off base on Star Wars. It's a fan fiction. Oh, that God. is the fan fiction. But these are very similar to the kinds of comments that we get on yeah, our videos. Uh, your mama, your mama. Here are some other things for you to munch on, you Frito munchers. Lucas sold the franchise on his own accord. No one forced him. So quit with your, we want George, as people like you sent him packing in the first place by breaking the poor man after his terrible prequels. Wait, you just called them terrible. I actually like the prequels. Mm -hmm. uh, I did. I didn't like everything about them. But the nuance, the nuance. And all that. You understood the nuance. I understood yes. the nuance. I didn't have to like all the acting. Oh, I didn't have I to like Jar Jar. I like the next part. His opinion is no longer relevant. Mark Hamill is a sad, angry old dude, still mad like you are that he didn't get to force throw an Imperial Walker and do backflips versus Kylo Ren. He does not own the character. He has no say in the direction of the character. So quit looking to him, looking to him uh, for to back you up. His opinion is no longer relevant to this. But you conversation. know his opinion is relative to the conversation. This guy. Because he says so. Random commenter number five. You hate Kathleen Kennedy, but you love The Mandalorian. Joke's on you, chumps. She executive produces it, just like she has all Star Wars content since the buy. This is somebody who works in the industry or... He's friends with Kathleen Kennedy and Ryan Johnson. Because only somebody who works in the industry or works in journalism... We'll call or it the buy. The buy. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. um, and the way that they bullet points everything, this is, yeah... Ray is not a Mary Sue, but yes, Lucas. Is. This no, Ray is a Mary Sue. I'm sorry, dude. Fight me. She's not. She's a Mary Sue. Sorry. Uh, destroys. Yeah, I can't fight. I'm too busy stuffing my face full of Fritos right now. Uh, Lucas destroys the Death Star using a religion he learned about five wait, minutes wait, ago. Wait, what? No. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, he was. An he was shooting womp rats. Uh, didn't you hear about? It? He was shooting womp rats. He's so dumb. And was one of only two survivors from oh, his I'm sorry. squad. He, he is the real fan, and we're not. So yeah, I'm even though he had never flown a ship off world before. Did Neither we ever... did Ray. Uh, yes, Ray... she can fix the Falcon and everything right. else on the first try. Ray is not a Mary Sue, but Ankin is. See, yippee, and this is pod racing. Don't you hate George? You hate George because you're you're throwing some shit. Ray is George. Mary Sue. I'm sorry, but every definition, Ray is Mary Sue. And every time you guys try to say she isn't, you just reinforce the case that she is. Yes, Ray is too powerful. There likely is a reason. Can you people at least wait until nine is up before That's going right. back to the old girl hating? I'm a woman, so kiss my ass. But you know, this is funny. Can you people wait until this episode nine is out? Uh, that's when we retconned it all. You need to come wait to nine when we retconned it all to, to make a reason for why she's so powerful because we didn't have one until now. When we decided at the very last minute we were gonna bring Palpatine in because we didn't know what else to do. We had this all figured out since the beginning, clearly. Enjoy your Fritos, Cheetos, and rabid anger and toxicity. I don't like Fritos. This Thanksgiving. It says the person being a rabid asshat, but whatever. What does this person... Oh my god, this person spends all day chatting, 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 chatting. It's all Star chatting, Wars stuff? It's all Star Wars. Yep, it's all Star Wars. Okay, I call... I call... He's friends with somebody, or he works over at um, Lucasfilm. Uh, yeah, and I think there are a lot of people who work at Lucasfilm that, that do uh, try to... Uh, I would say infiltrate the the fandom menace, but I think they they try to influence, they try to stir shit up. Well, this is, this to, is to be the victims. Well, here this is what people were saying. I haven't abused anyone online, let alone Ryan Johnson. I just don't like this movie. Sorry to ruin your narrative, and that's just it. These people can't understand that the, it, the reason these movies are doing poorly is because the general public doesn't like them. It's, they're not they're not even messing with Ryan Johnson. They're probably like, who? They just don't like these movies. Stop blaming it on everybody else. Um, because they don't do well. That's all on you guys. And I'm going to say you guys because I'm pretty sure you work there by the way you're behaving. I am pretty sure we've had commenters before that work there. Oh, I uh, and I think that they spend an inordinate amount of time 
fuming, fuming about those meddling kids. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what I think is going on here. And they're they're flipping out. Now, speaking of flipping out. I do like him. I like, I John, like John Boyega. I like John Boyega. I like He's going to squeal. He's going to tell us what was actually going on. I can tell. I would have watched the heck out of a Finn movie. I wanted Finn to be the main hero. I I, 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 I thought he was. The movie started with him. The trailer started with him. Mm -hmm. You know, and then they do a bait and switch. Like, oh yeah, I know we introduced the stormtrooper and this whole thing going on here. But yeah, we're just gonna flip it over to to this girl. To the way that's not a Mary Sue, but it. Yeah, and then then Finn, we're just gonna make him a joke in the second movie. Just there you go. Uh, yeah, I thought he was gonna be the main character, and I was I was all on board with that. I'm like, yeah, Luke Skywalker is gonna teach a stormtrooper how to be a Jedi. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Nope. He can't, Ex he's a man. <laughs> Expectations subverted. Uh, yeah, he has to. He gets to be the uh, the sidekick. We get the wooden Mary Sue instead. Off anyway. to the sidekick lounge with you, Finn. Anyway, John Boyega admits he is the one. So speaking of, of getting these random comments from people I'm pretty sure are associated with Disney or Lucasfilm, um, we had some people pop in. No, that's a lie. They never lost the script. There is no script floating around. Then J.J. Abrams uh, confirmed that, yeah, there was a script that was lost and actually wound up on eBay. And guess what? Only the real fans would know the truth. John Boyega admits it. So, John Boyega admits that the script was floating around. This is about the same time that all of these leaks mm -hmm. started to appear, started to surface. Uh, I think these stupid, stupid, stupid plot points are true. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I give up even caring. Uh, well, they care because the plot points are true. The fandom menace, quote unquote, has been mocking this movie fiercely, fiercely. And I think they know that this is going to be a shit show. They know there's going to be videos coming out after the fact being like, oh my God, all that stupid stuff we heard. Mm -hmm. It's all true. It's true. All of it. Um, I thought it was ridiculous when uh, with The Force Awakens that people had leaked supposedly they were going to kill Han Solo off in the very stupid uh, fashion. I'm like, hell no, they're not going to kill off Han Solo. People would hate that. They did it. <laughs> you know, exactly the way the, the leakers uh, said. Now, the Last Jedi, there were uh, a lot of uh, uh, conflicting stories, and some of it, I think, was Lucasfilm because they were talking about how they were trolling some of the YouTubers mm -hmm. online. In this case, because we know there was a script uh, floating around out there, I, I think these leaks are legit. I think Ray's going to walk off with uh, everything. She's going to walk off with. Uh, the Skywalker name, the Falcon, mm -hmm. uh, Chewie, if they don't blow him up. Oh, well, the Falcon I blow up, too. If they don't blow up the Falcon, and uh, Luke and Leia's lightsabers, and, and she even, I guess she flies Luke's X-Wing back to Tatooine. That's so she right. gets every, she gets all the toys. She has, uh, she is like, just cleaned up in the, the biggest intergalactic divorce settlement. Everybody. She gets everybody's everything. Uh, but she's not a Mary Sue. No, not at all. Not at all. Now, what happened with John Boyega is pretty funny. He actually left it under his bed when he moved from the probably so the place he, was, he the probably the place he was staying at because you know when they were doing filming I was and partying. he was partying and left it under <laughs> his bed and then a few weeks later the cleaning per the crew came in the clean lady found it and put it on ebay yeah so i think somebody made a copy of that i think somebody took some pictures and i think these leaks are true i really do i think this movie is going to be uh my personal opinion, uh, I, I would be pleasantly surprised if it doesn't completely suck, but we already know we've got f flying stormtroopers get launched they off. They fly of, now? They fly wait, now. Wait, what? They, yeah. They fly now? Are you kidding me? They've never flown before, ever. Oh my God. I, I had no idea. Yeah, they can fly now. Uh, they can be launched off of, of the backs of motorcycles that have Maybe shields. Maybe somebody could launch this movie off of them. <laughs> We also have horses on a starship. Uh, oh, but they're not horses on a spaceship. So don't say that. I, I think that's hilarious. And not this, really horses either. This is going to be the best comedy of 2019 for sure. Uh, but the prediction's going down. So they're they're already like, yes, we know who you, you people are. Um, and I predict what's going to happen next year is as Kathleen Kennedy is going to quiet, quietly resign. Next year or 2021? Maybe 2021. They'll just be like, oh, she's stepping down. She just wants to retire. She's done all she could do here. And look at all the wonderful things she's done. Look at all the wonderful things she's done. Just like the uh, Cartoon Network head. Uh, that, as I understand it, got pushed out the damn door. But they're like, oh, yeah, she's leaving on her own at the end of the year. And we don't have a successor lined up, but that's okay. She just she She's going to take some time off and think about life. 
<laughs> think about what she's done. <laughs> <laughs> you 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 go sit in that corner and you think about what you've done, Kathleen. No, she doesn't care. She's she's filthy, stinking rich. She doesn't care. Um, so yeah, they know who who the Phantom Menace is. Of course they do. They've been watching. They've been watching uh, for years. I, yeah. I guarantee you, they probably have people at Lucasfilm or Disney knowing how Disney operates. At least they're probably spending a good portion of their day watching every damn video. Well, I like that one person commented about the Ryan Johnson thing. Most people are not. In any group, most people do not say anything on Twitter, do not harass anyone or anything. They just don't like the movie. Yeah. That's what happened with Solo. Um, I think that's what's going to happen again with this one. Most people just don't like it. And I'm, I think people like me and like them are just tired of being told they're this name, that name, that they're haters, that they're trolls, that they're whatever, because they simply didn't like the Star Wars movie. And I'm just tired of it. Preach it. I am. We can still, we, we, can, we can't see the bottom of this bottle yet. So you gotta drink some more. I did drink some more. Okay, we'll drink some more, more. I'm not drink. It's Thanksgiving. Be thankful we've got beer to to make this well, more palatable. It's flavored beer. It's I flavored. Beer. I don't like beer. It's sorry. flavored beer. It's flavored beer. It's good. So are we gonna wrap this up? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, let's wrap this up. And again, guys, have a uh, happy Thanksgiving. If you're in the U.S., there will be some videos tomorrow. They're pre-recorded. Uh, we weren't completely drunk for those. But uh, we might be maybe <laughs> I don't know. on Friday. I don't We're know. not drunk. I don't know why you keep saying that. I'm feeling a little too. I have more of this than you did, though. Yeah. All right. So talk to you guys later. Bye. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe. Ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.